Good morning, friends. It's good to see you today. Um, we're going to uh, continue our study in the book of James. We're in chapter 3. We've just uh, got done discussing uh, problems in taming the tongue. And now we're going to uh, go to a different subject matter that James discussed. And it's only five short verses, but uh, he talks about two different kinds of wisdom. Let's read uh, chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done, and the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, or of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes down from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Okay, so obviously we have the two different kinds of wisdom that which is earthly or worldly, that is wicked and evil, that comes from the devil, or we have that wisdom which comes from above, that is pure, that is spiritual, that is from God. Uh, the passage that we just read uh, has a natural outgrowth from the discussion of taming the tongue. Uh, the six verses that we just read divide into three sections— and exhortation in verse 13, and then earthly wisdom in verses 14 through 16, and then wisdom from heaven in verses 17 through 18. So what we're going to do this morning is discuss uh, or use our expositor's Bible commentary to uh, dive deep into or verses 13 through 16. James addresses the person, verse 13, who is wise and understanding. The word sophos in the Greek is wise, and it is a technical term among the Jews for the teacher, the scribe, the rabbi. It appears that the author is still speaking to those who would want to be teachers or who would be teachers. Here it is not what they say that he is concerned with, but rather how they live. The term epistemon describes one who is expert or has special knowledge or training. Thus, anyone who would be a teacher who claims to be an expert with special understanding is under obligation to show it by his good life, as verse 13 says. He should possess know-how and be skilled in applying God's truth to practical everyday living. The particular characteristic stressed in this verse is humility that comes from wisdom. The word translated humility uh, more commonly is rendered meekness, and meekness is a good quality. Um, a better translation of this, though, might be gentleness, but it does not adequately uh, describe the Greek word. Uh, prates is gentleness, but not a passive gentleness growing out of weakness or resignation. It is an active attitude of, of deliberate acceptance. The word was used to describe a horse that had been broken and trained to submit to the bridle. So, you know, we, we understand that the, the a horse that is wild uh, and isn't broken is untamed and and hard to control. But this horse that is broken still has great power, but is gentle in its power. It is a gentleness that comes from wisdom or is characteristic of wisdom. James does not have in mind the Greek, Greek concept of speculative or theoretical wisdom, but the Hebrew idea of practical wisdom that enables one to live a life of godliness. So verse 14, if you harbor bitter 
truth, or if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Apparently, some of James's readers were harboring bitter envy and selfish ambition in their hearts. The determinative word is erethian, which is selfish ambition, and that speaks of a self-seeking attitude bent on gaining advantage or prestige for oneself or one's group. So it's an ambitious, a selfish, ambitious uh, word. The forceful term colors the word zalon, which is envy, so that zalon here means selfish zeal. So it's one who is zealous about selfishness or or uh, envy. This forceful term, uh, I'm sorry, James makes it clear by the adjective bitter that he is referring to a sinful zeal. Because this condition existed among his readers, he insists that they must not boast about it or deny the truth. James's readers have been priding themselves in their partisan defense of the truth, a defense that was to their own advantage and advancement. Though such, or through such bittering and partisan defense, they were in reality denying the very truth they were attempting to defend. Verse 15, such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. Though James refers to the attitude in verse 14 as wisdom, he obviously does not mean it is genuine wisdom. On the contrary, it is the wisdom claimed by the world of would-be teachers of verse 14 whose lives contradict their claims. Such wisdom evaluates everything by worldly standards and makes personal gain life's highest goal. Well, isn't that sad to have personal gain be one's highest goal? Uh, I think about being a father and, and, and being married to Wendy uh, and having three kids that I love dearly. And, and my highest goal or aspiration is not about personal gain, but about uh, them accomplishing and, and having a relationship with the Lord. That's, that's what, what I'm excited about. God is the source of genuine wisdom. That comes from Proverbs 2, verse 6. But this pseudo-wisdom is not from him because James declares such wisdom does not come down from heaven. Instead of being from above, which is anothen, it is earthly in source as well as in kind. It views life from the limited viewpoint of this world rather than from heaven's vantage point. Its mind is set on earthly things, Philippians 3.19. James also says that it is of the devil. So uh, definitely this kind of wisdom or pursuit of this kind of wisdom is evil. For where, this is verse 16, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. So we have the conjunction for, which indicates that bitter zeal and selfish ambition always results in disorder and every evil practice. Acastasia, disorder, is a common word for anarchy and political turmoil. James is no doubt speaking of disturb disturbance and turmoil in the church. The evil practice refers specifically to worthless activities, to deeds that are bad because they are good for nothing and cannot produce any real benefit. Selfish zeal and ambition, then, always tend to destroy spiritual life and work. So when we think of maturing in Christ, uh, in doing spiritual work and maturing in spiritual work. Um, we think of a person that, that was described by James as being meek or having gentleness, uh, a, a wisdom that is, I would say, reserved. Uh, I, know, I know some older Christian men that don't say a lot, uh, but when they do, you better listen. And it's how they act in their life 
that speaks for the wisdom in their life, not what they say necessarily. Although when they do speak, like I say about her lesson, because it's, they don't they don't uh, offer their opinion very often. They let uh, the matter of uh, God's wisdom rule in their thoughts and in their speech and certainly in their actions. Um, on our prayer list, we have an addition, um, Mark Lewis. Uh, who was a, a friend of mine in my church, uh, congregant, um, been under the care of hospice for several years with a uh, heart condition. You know, he passed away yesterday, and we want to remember Mark Lewis's family. He has several family members here. Uh, think of Connie, Michael, and David Lewis. Uh, they're cousins of Mark, and and um, anyways, we're going to miss Mark and his gentle soul. Uh, he was truly uh, a kind and loving man and uh, soft-spoken, but yet um, I, I just thought that Mark always had a, a very gentle soul. Uh, we want to continue to remember Eddie Bain and Greg Stuckey. Both are dealing with heart issues and are uh, going on with uh, treatment and seeing doctors um, uh, for their heart issues. Uh, Dick Bruner is recovering from cancer surgery. We want to continue to remember our care center residents here in Putnam County, and, and you may have family that is in another care center, and, and I suspect that they are just like that of PCs, and, and the residents have to stay in their rooms, and they're keeping them separated. Uh, this this covid uh, coronavirus, rather, is is a scary thing, and, and people are are uh, wise to take it seriously. Uh, we'll remember Caitlin Valentine and Dakota and their new baby girl. Uh, uh, Caitlin had to go back to the hospital for a time because of a blood clot in the lung, but now she's home and I think doing well. Uh, we'll remember Dorothy Smith, caretaker at Camp IMO. She is recovering from surgery. I believe um, what I heard was going to be having some treatments. Elena McCree is a young lady, that uh, school-age girl, that is having terrible headaches. And at this time, they, they can't seek treatment because of the COVID-19 issue. And then we want to remember our friends Craig Vestal and Jerry Roberts, who both have had uh, surgery recently uh, for cancer issues and uh, certainly will be uh, continuing to doctor and seeking treatment. So the list is getting longer, but that just uh, helps us focus and have uh, purpose in our prayer life. And I just I just hope that uh, you keep these folks in your prayers and continue to lift them up to God often and pray for them specifically. Uh, God knows their condition and uh, God is waiting to hear from us to petition on their behalf. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity we've had this morning. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we understand maybe a little better uh, the earthly, worldly wisdom that uh, had selfish ambition and envy involved in it that James was trying to warn his readers about. And Lord, we we just pray that our lives would not be ruled by that kind of wisdom, that we would seek wisdom that is from above, that is pure, that is spiritual, that is godly. Uh, Father, help us as we live our lives to be good examples of whose we are. We belong to your son, Jesus Christ, and we are ambassadors in this world on behalf of him. He left us with the great commission to go and and share the gospel with the lost, um, Father, to, to seek out those who uh, are suffering and, and to disciple them, to build them up, Father, to uh, make their lives better. And, and that's what we need to do. Um, Father, I'm just so grateful for each one that is sharing with me during this time this morning. I just pray, Father, that you would bless their lives, that you would uh, bless their homes and uh, bless their families. Father, keep them healthy. Uh, 
Father, we just again want to lift up these uh, people that we've mentioned in our uh, list of folks that, that need your special care, that you need your special attention, and we just lift them up to you, Father, and trusting that you know what is best for their lives and that you know how to treat them and care for them. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so abundantly and for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to pay the price for our sins so that when we leave this world, we can enter into your presence freely and understand, everyone understand what a loving Father is, is supposed to be like. Uh, Father, I know I have a loving Father, but I know when I get to heaven, uh, I'll see perfection, uh, perfect love coming from you. And that's something that all of us are going to experience for the first time. So, Father, bless us now as we as we uh, end this time together. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have a good day, and I want you to stay safe and stay healthy and try not to get snowbound. <laughs>